So I'm going to be sharing uh, this module called React Pivot, which I've uh, been finding very useful, and hopefully you'll find useful as well. Uh, I do want to clarify that the React in the React name comes from the fact that this was built using React to be really fast. If you use it in your web apps, you do not have to use React or JSX or anything like that. You can just use vanilla JavaScript. So um, I do want to, I guess, share this module with you uh, sort of in the, in the form of a, a story which communicates how it, how it came about. So let's just pretend, uh, and this is totally hypothetical, this never happened to anyone, certainly not me, uh, there is a, an executive or a manager or an analyst who figures out that there's some, some data in your company's database that's really important to them. And uh, they happen to be a muggle or they, um, they don't have the right passwords or, or security to get into the database, or maybe you're just using a really exotic database that, they, that they, they don't know how to use. So they hear that you are the person to talk to for things like this. Like you will, they just come talk to you, you'll, you'll be able to figure it out. So let's just pretend that, since this is, uh, this is LA, let's just pretend that the data in your database this happens to be all the movies released in 2011. I'll just make it bigger so you know that I'm not lying. Now, in reality, they would want something that changes over time. That's the whole reason why they're coming to you. Otherwise, they would have just gotten one-time export, do this in Excel, and, and wouldn't really need you. So you're the person uh, that can help them out. They, they beg with you. They, they plead. They uh, offer to pay you under the table. They threaten your firstborn. And out of the like, gracious good nature of your heart, you agree to make this very simple report for them. It'll take like five minutes, and then you'll never hear from them again. And they're, they're super grateful. So chances are your data looks something like this. It's in, if it's in SQL or it's a document store, it's something analogous to columns and rows easy. You can totally help them out. Um, and it would look something like this, right? You can just make an easy HTML table, columns, rows, done. So if you roll your own solution like this, a couple of things that you want to be aware of. One, you want your columns to be human-friendly names. No camel case, no snake case, Muggles hate that. And what Muggles love more than anything are special characters in their column titles. They just love hyphens, aka minus signs, or dollar signs, and things like that. Um, next up is that you want the formatting for the cells to be pretty configurable. Unless you're storing money in your database as strings with a dollar sign. Uh, look, if you're doing that, that's cool. But chances are you're not. Um, <laughs> So you would need to be able to turn that from just the integers or floats that you have into this. Now, the third thing is they'll probably want to sort. Now, the sorting and the formatting do not play nicely together if you're not careful. Um, if uh, you have a string, uh, then 10 comes before 2. If you have a number, 2 comes before 10. Uh, just something to keep in mind. But, you know, what we got here, it's not, not too bad. You, you know, whip this together with uh, just nothing too trouble. Maybe, you know, trouble and you got jQuery plugin or something like that. Good to go, hand it off. Expect to never hear from them again. Yeah, we know that's not true. Um, this is so great. Like, I'm so impressed with how quickly you did this, but it's really important that we have this other data. Like, profit or dollar per tomato is really important for this. And that's cool and all, but you don't have columns for this in the database. So now you have to have you know, computed columns or uh, values that are dependent on the other rows. And then that also needs to have to be formatted. And then that also has to obey 
sorting. So then you do that. Um, but of course, that's not all. Then they need these to link to the source to where it came from. And then what they love more than anything in the world, you'll, be, you'll have like the best friend ever. If numbers over zero are green and numbers less than zero are red, that is really important. So here we are, you know, totally done. Nothing, nothing else they could possibly want. Um, no, that's not true. They want to group by something. You know, this, this was really good, but then they're like, they start using it and they realize, oh, wait a minute, I want, I want all of these grouped up. So that's cool and all, except, you know, say we were interested in 20th Century Fox. So the, the Rotten Tomato score for all those movies, you just add them up. Does like 20th Century Fox have like, I don't know, 600 like on a, out of 100? No, it's gotta be an average. And then like dollar per tomato. I mean, if we, we looked at Columbia, which had uh, three movies that year. So, oh, by the way, dollar per tomato, that's how much budget they spent to get an additional point of Rotten Tomato score. Very important stuff, you see. Um, so what would the dollar per tomato score be for Columbia? If you just had these rows, couldn't just total them. It's not, the answer to this math problem is not three something, and it's not an average of averages. So you have to do that correctly as well. So the answer, of course, is that you total all the budgets up, you total the scores, and then you divide them. So then you wind up with this. So now you have the metrics working for grouping, and then, of course, they come to you and they ask, okay, that's great, but I want to group on genre. Okay, so now you got to group on genre. Change their mind, they want to group on story, and then they want to do, no, I want studio, and then I want to see the title. Change my mind, I want genre, and then the title. And then before you know it, you're just like, you're like a human keyboard that they're just inputting SQL commands into. And really, <laughs> nobody, nobody likes that. Except for that one person, but we don't talk about them. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. Does some other neat things like pagination. Everybody loves pagination. Uh, you can solo. So let's just, I think I showed that already. So if we just wanted to see Disney movies, you could do that. Um, you can go pretty much as deep as you want. Uh, so, you know, they'll start to ask questions like once they see... Once they see this, they'll, they'll be like, oh, okay. So what was, like, what story gives us the biggest bang for the buck? Like, if we want to, say, win an Oscar on the cheap, like this one. Okay, well, what studios have done that before? Oh, it looks like, you know, Columbia and, and Spyglass. All right, so let's look at Columbia. Like, what other stories did they do? Oh, Transformation, Underdog. What were those movies? There you go. So if you ever find yourself in a position where somebody very nice and charming is asking you for a single report, it'll take five minutes, they'll leave you alone after that, just say maybe they won't. And, um, you know, it might be a good tool for the job. So uh, that's about it. Um, could show code, but really that's all on GitHub. and. I'm around if you want to know anything more or see something, just, just ask me. So uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, so this is React Pivot. There it is. Um, just, uh, yeah. Just my name, React Pivot. It's on the, the JSLA website and there you go. Uh, I guess I'll show you real quick. Like, if you're not using React, it just looks like this. Uh, you just pass it how you want to group, uh, sorry, the, your data, how you want to group, the operations per row, and then how you want to format those operations.